Howdy, nigger, howdy. But y'all excited to be here this morning? Man, I am. I'm really excited. It's a, it's going to be a blessed morning, and, and it is always. We've got some new faces over here. Welcome to our little old church house. We hope you find something here that you like, and you might want to come back. Probably not since I pointed you out. <laughs> We do that to all the new folks. Not really. We'll make you get up here and say it. <laughs> anyway, let's get up and get this thing started, okay? Yes. 
Okay, and then uh, Donna Bowden, I need you to speak on the Sunday stroll this afternoon. There is a Sunday stroll in the park off of Free in Sanger, and it's all free. We're going to participate, we're going to give the serve, let you get a bowl of ice cream, walk around and get the topping you need. You can go in the water path if you want to get wet. Uh, it's from 5 to 7. So, <laughs> Thank you, Miss Donna and Mr. Bob. Okay, Monday at uh, 6 p.m., we will be having dinner. We will be having sandwiches, chicken salad, egg salad, and tuna salad. So if everybody that comes to watch Chosen at 6.30, if you could bring a chip and a dip or something that you'd like to bring, that would be great. Wednesday at 6.45 p.m., the youth meet. 7 p.m. we have Wednesday night service. Thursday morning at 10 a.m. we have in accessory prayer. Sunday, July the 17th, which is today, I guess the men will meet over here, ladies, and we will meet over here. And we'll try not to talk loud and get in each other's business. <laughs> okay, uh, Sunday, July the 17th, 5 to 7 p.m., the Sunday Sanger Social. Saturday, July the 23rd, which is this Saturday at 8 a.m., we're going to be having a women's team breakfast, of which the men is cooking. Yeah. Then at 9 o'clock, we're going to be decorating cookies with Miss Sam. So it's, it's fun. We've done this before, and it was a lot of fun. The cost is $10 a person. Also... Mickey said, if any man can come help cook the breakfast Sunday, uh, Saturday morning, that would be deeply appreciated. And if you could show hands of how many women's going to be here, kind of give them an ideal of how much they need to cook. So if you're going to be here this Saturday, are you counting? <laughs> and two more, because I know Paula and Sarah's coming. Then Sunday, July the 24th, we're going to have a business uh, meeting following the church service. Sunday, July the 23rd, we're going to be having the Lord's Supper. We're going to need your recipes for the cookbook, ladies, by October the 1st. Or gentlemen, if you have a recipe you'd like to put in there, please do. We also need a count for the promise. We need to know how many are going by August the 14th. And we, uh, Ms. Barr has packets she can bring you if you think you would like to go. Just let us know. We have sign-up sheets back on the table in the hallway. Just sign up. And if you need a packet, please see Ms. Barr. She'll get you one. Has all kinds of information of everything that's going on over there. Also, the backpack pro program begins again this week. So if you can purchase some things, there is a list. Do you have a list? I have, I have a list. Oh, Lori has a list. Lori, if you could post that maybe on that bulletin board, we'd appreciate it. Uh, if you could bring anything off of that list to help with the backpack program, you just put it out there, and then Miss Teresa and Mr. Wayne takes it over to them, and any help you can give is appreciated. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, did I miss anything? You about the crayons and the colored pencils for Thank you. They are collecting crayons and colored pencils and uh, chalk for the Abigail Arms, correct? Yes. So if you can bring any of that, we've already gotten quite a bit, but anything you can do to help is appreciated. Anything else? Thank you, Jody. I'd forgotten about that. Okay, it's time to shake hands and hug necks and say howdy. Howdy, Miss Wanda. You guys have a blessing. <laughs> I'm going to go down, I'll take you. 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 I'
Jesus, my world is in the world. We believe this world behind you. What you need or how you need your way. There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. So they did. They threw him in the furnace. 
But when King Nebuchadnezzar went to see them, to see what was going on, he could see four men walking around in that fire. Four, not three. You know who the fourth one <laughs> Jesus was walking around in that fire, and he was protecting them. And they were, they were saying, get them out of the fire. So they pull them out of the fire, and guess what? God had protected them, even from the stump, didn't even put in prison. Imagine that. So faith, we're going to study about faith. Faith is believing what God says is true, even when you can't see the outcome. Let's go. Let's go study. visitor with us today. We're, we really appreciate you being here. Um, this is our time for praises and prayers. It's time that we want to know the things going on in your life that we as a church can pray for because when we pray in unity, God really special listens. Is that a way? Is that special Yeah, that's, that's a new thing. I just done started it. So there you go. <laughs> God really listens to us. He listens to us anyway, but when we come in unity, it's special. So, And we also want to know what's going on in your life that we can uh, give God praise for. So, I have one that was given earlier that we'll start out. <clears throat> Joanna Cross, her grandson, swallowed a postal key. So they're trying to get him to pass it. He was in the hospital, but they sent him home to see if he would pass it. So... Pray for him that he passes that key and he get better. It's right here. I didn't make this up. <laughs> so. All right. Yeah, Gail. Pray for DJ. The baby's doing good, but she's having a little bit of trouble with her blood pressure. I talked to her last night and uh, she's trying to clean up. And I'm like, please let that down. Put it down and rest. So. Okay. So DJ Mason, we thought she was going to have to have it last couple of days ago, and they went to the hospital and said she was doing really well. So they wanted to try to carry it a little bit longer. So her blood pressure's up. So let's pray for her. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just want to say thank you for the prayers for my friend. Um, she's having some mental health stuff going on, and so she's currently at the hospital. She's safe. So I just appreciate all the prayers that y'all have lifted her up with. So continue to lift up your friend. God knows who she is. We don't we don't have to have a name. So God knows what's going on there. So let's just continue to pray for this friend that's in the hospital and, and safe. That uh, things will turn around for her. Okay. Yes, she should. My uh, brother, Benny Parent, and his wife, uh, they just diagnosed her with Parkinson's. Okay. So they're having both of them having health problems. So Benny's wife, right. Barbara. Barbara, has been diagnosed with Parkinson's. So let's pray for her as they fight that battle. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to have some prepared prayers for uh, uh, family that I know is going through hard times. Okay. For a family that's going through hard times, so let's pray for them that things will turn around for them very soon. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that are going through hard times, but let's let's pray for all of them, but specifically, specifically for this one, please. Thank you. Cindy, did you have something? I did. I just wanted to thank Mickey and Bill for more light in the women's bathroom. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard more about this light this morning. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. <laughs> I'm really good. Uh, Ken. Yeah, my brother made it back home from. Doing uh, <laughs> better? Good. So. Great. 
and Grady's home. Let's pray for him that he continues to, to get better. He's doing better, but let's pray for him that he continues to get better. So, all right, I'm going to get this right. Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pray for Sandy. She's dealing with her mom that can't remember nothing, mm -hmm. and she's hunting keys this morning. Okay. And uh, then I have a praise. We got to see our new great grandson yesterday. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Were you able to pick him up? I first wanted to hold him. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big rascal. Well, he was. Uh, so pray for Cindy as she's dealing with her mom and going through whatever it is. She just can't remember things anymore. So anyway, thank you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Susan has a, and then those cable coming Tuesday if y'all pray for coming through this. Her hair's wrapping out now again. So, <laughs> all right. Be Mr. Queen. We'll, we'll continue to pray for her. It's been a rough go for her, so let's uh, just pray for her comfort as she goes through that process for sure. All right. Do you have something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, a friend of ours, uh, Craig Wallace, he came here and played guitar with the Bluegrass Band. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he was uh, uh, unloading his pistol and shot a hole through his hand. Oh, no. and, and, and the blessing part about it is that it didn't tear up much bone. And uh, the blessing part is the uh, the bullet that went through his hand went through his wife's favorite chair and she wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's the blessing part that she wasn't there, but... I can pray for him that he heals up and gets to play. It's about yeah. three months. What's his name? Craig Wallace. Craig Wallace. So Craig had an unfortunate accident with his gun, shot his hand, and shot his wife's chair. That happened at our house. I don't know. There's something going on there. But no. Uh, no, let's pray for him that he gets better soon and can play. Because he did pray a really for everybody to be careful with him. Yeah, absolutely. We need them. We need to take care of. Them. Right, absolutely. Tom. That's true. Yeah. Nice. Nikki. Yeah, I do. Praise and grand, our grandson Cole and doing better. Uh, appreciate prayers and keep me in prayers. We go on way to go and uh, Justin, my grandma, Gloria, and Allie are all dealing with this COVID deal right now. Christ for them. Yep. All pretty good right now, but they need a sure. Okay. So praise that Colton's doing better. We're grateful for that. And we just continue to pray for him as he makes progress. So let's continue that with the God and then pray for the McReynolds family as they go through the COVID thing that uh, seems to be spreading more and more and more. So uh, just make sure that you know, we do the right thing. In that respect, so yeah. Let everybody continue to pray for this country. Yes. Pray for the country, absolutely. Such a roller coaster right now, things going on. So we just need some big time intervention. Make this place right, Shelly. Um, I've got a friend named Casey Nagrin, and he's a little person. He's got COVID, and that he's been in the hospital. He's been in the hospital. I appreciate yeah, so Jason put him on the COVID list. Um, let's just pray for everybody that's got it and uh, try to get this thing over with. So, Sydney? Let's keep praying for Shelly. She lost her puppy. Yeah, Shelly lost puppy this mm -hmm. yesterday. So, the day before, so let's pray for her. It's a tough one when you lose your best buddy right there. So, pray for her. Yeah. We need to keep bubbling our prayers. He had a little surgery this week. He's doing a lot better. Bubba Harper? Went on his back. That was a yeah. musician. Mm -hmm. um, we just need to have a good prayer for him. Yep. Just, you know, pray for Bubba. He had surgery on his back. So pray for uh, his healing as he goes through that process. And uh, Jane knows what it's like. So. Uh, let's continue to pray for Shane. He's a little stiff this morning, it looks like. So let's pray for him that he gets better. So, uh, those are tough ones. Yeah, Sam. Are we going to keep the uh, Samson family? Well, Samson family. Trent. Yeah, yeah for Trent. Um, he's been around a little bit, so that's a good thing. He's showing some strength in the things that he's doing, but he's got a long way to go. So, Sharon. Yeah, I'm Kevin. 
So pray for Sharon. She's having a CT scan on Monday? Thursday. Thursday, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, just pray for good results from that. Okay. Yes. Well, continue prayers and crisis for my niece, Amy and Lowe. She may be your neighbor. She was a peace banger. But uh, praises for the people who helped save her life. The outcome could have done much different. But she is doing better. She's recovering from more than one stroke, and she will be transported from Harris tomorrow over to Dallas Sailor for rehab. Okay. Pray for her so, recovery. Uh, Amy. What's in love. Yeah. Yeah. Amy in love. So praises for the people that were there for her. I think mean, she's Mary Ann's mail carrier. Oh, okay. So, and then um, continue to pray for her as she goes through the healing process and rehab. The, the people that were involved, the, her postmaster, Richard Cox, and the DPS tracked her down through her scanner in her room right here mm -hmm. to find her, to get her the help she needed. Right. She already passed out. Wow. <clears throat> so technology is a good thing a lot of times. Not a good thing sometimes, but a lot of times it is. So, yes, ma'am. Uh, just prayers for my family. Um, this Tuesday will be the two-year death date for my grandfather. And so just prayers. It's still very hard without him. And July is a tough month. So, yep. so pray for the Horton family. It's, uh, it's two years since their grandpa died. So pray for peace. Mm -hmm. We pray for you, Dad, every day. <laughs> he needs it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Uh, praises That's, for yesterday, the play day. It was, uh, it was a good day. It was hot. Thank you, everybody, for coming out and I'm supposed to help the arena and shit. And all that. And my granddaughter carried the American, the Texas flag and grand Nice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> including mine, but uh, nobody got left off the play. Yeah. So overall, praises for a good day. Nobody got hurt. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, okay. Yeah, me. Yeah. Pray for rain, for sure. Yeah, we need uh, some relief here, for sure. Okay. Anything else? All right. How about unspoken prayer? All right. Would you pray with me? Well, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to be here, Father. We thank you for the opportunity to, to sit here freely in a cool place, to, to hear your word. And Father, we just pray that as the word is brought to us through Ken, Lord, that our minds and our hearts and our souls would hear it, would accept it, and we would use it in our lives each and every day. And Father, we just come to you with a long list this morning. A lot of praises, Lord, and it's always great to hear the praises and things that you've done, and we just thank you for those. We thank you for all the things that you do for us, Lord, and we should all praise you for everything in our lives because we know it all comes from you. And Lord, we just lift up the prayer requests that were mentioned. We just put them in your hands and just ask for a special love to come around each and every one of those that were spoken about, Lord. And for the families and for this church family, Lord, we just pray that uh, your presence would be felt in each of those situations. And they know that when things are, are happening, it's because of you. And Lord, we just, uh, we look for each and every opportunity that you would provide us, Lord, to, to share the love of Jesus Christ with others. Because we know there's people out there that don't know you. And who knows what tomorrow's going to bring, Lord. We, so we just pray for that opportunity, Father. We, we thank you for... Just all the blessings that you give us, and we thank you for safe travels here today. We just ask that as we leave this place, that uh, we would be the same people out there as we are in here. And Lord, then as people see us and the things, our actions and our words and our thoughts, Lord, we just pray that they would bring glory to you and others would see it. We ask that you, as we leave this place, Lord, you would protect us, keep us safe, and bring us back to hear your word again. In Jesus' name. Amen.
sacred prayer. Father God, I just uh, want to thank you for this poor death, Lord, that uh, you stuck me behind here. Lord, I just pray that the words that come out of my, out of my mouth give glory to you, Lord. Just let me be a vessel of your love to the lost and dying world. I say this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Welcome to North Texas Trinity Cowboy Church. So good to see your smiling faces. If, if you're watching us on Facebook, hit the like, hit the heart. We really like those hearts. Um, if you've got a prayer request, type it in there. We will pray for you. We are a praying church. So just know that uh, we love you and God loves you. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start it off with the Psalms 18.2, and it really hit home with me, especially with this sermon. It says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. <coughs> it's been several months ago when Mickey Mc Mc McNary made his comment to me, Tips. He said, take a special listen to this. I love that, Will. He said, have you ever noticed that that gate to the cow pasture directly across from the entrance to our church, have you ever looked at that? I said, yeah, I I've seen it. He said, it's held together with everything imaginable to keep it shut. He said he must have used everything in the bed of his truck uh, to keep it closed. He's got bailing wire on it. Bob wire. Some old yellow nylon rope. Maybe even some duct tape and zip ties. He said, there's a sermon in there for you, Ken. <laughs> you know what? I'm persuaded to think that God gives each and every one of us special gifts and talents. Not only can he fix anything, I think Mickey's special gift is to make you think, to give you ideas, especially when it comes to our, our spiritual wellness in this church, in which both glorifies God and lends to the building of His kingdom. His gift is that He can look at the big picture and come up with thoughts and ideas that will make us prosper and flourish in Usually they're a lot of fun when we do it. So naturally, I look at that gate every time I come and go, which has been about a thousand times since then. And now guess what? That's my gift to you. <laughs> in, the, in the Bible, gates are mentioned many times because gates are, they were very important at the time, just as they are now, along with the heavenly fortified barrier, the encompassing that encompassed the perimeter of the city. The gate and the wall were the first line of defense for the population, those who lived with inside of the wall. We read in the Bible that not, not, not only were the gates were fortified, um, they were important as to where that that's where they did government business. Um, that's where they held court. Public announcements were, were proclaimed there. Business transactions were made there. The first mention of a city gate was in Genesis 19.1. It was the, the gate of Sodom that a, uh, Abraham's nephew Lot greeted the angel visitors to his city. And it's where Boaz officially cleared the legal matters up that related to his marriage to Ruth, which is found in Ruth 1.11. The city gate is where the Old Testament prophets came to prophesy to the community of God's impending wrath. Some gates took as many as 20 people to open and close them. Usually opened in the daylight and closed at night. It said that the, that the keeper of the gate wielded the high power in the city. In the Bible, Jesus gives us imagery of him being the keeper of the gate or the gate itself as it pertains to sheep 
sheep being a metaphor for us Christians, and the protection of us. In John 10 and 11, 10, 7, it said, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. He goes on to say in John 10, 11 through 12, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. So in these verses, what Jesus is trying to convey is this, that he is the keeper of the gate and he wills the power as to what goes on to, at heaven's door because of his self-sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. Not only that, but he and he only holds the judgment as to who passes through the gate. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father except through me. It is by God's grace, love, and mercy and our belief in Him that we are allowed to pass through. Not, not, not of anything that we have done, but for one reason only. He loves us. That's it. Not only does He allow us to pass through, what He does is He gives us the key to the gate whenever we accept Him as our Lord and our Savior. What I, what I mean is by that is even though we're saved, we are free to make choices. Even like that, those choices that pertain to our relationship with Him on our part. We're susceptible to being the, one of those lost sheep that He will leave the flock in search of. And whenever He finds us, He will bring us home to join that flock again. The, tr the very truth is we never were lost. He knows right where we are at all times. So with the key in the hand, we walk right past the gatekeeper into the world that is waiting to devour us. And He comes for us every time. It's the repentance of our sin that keeps us safe and secure. Sounds simple, doesn't it? It is. It's the easiest thing, the quickest thing you could ever do. Repent and ask God for forgiveness. I do it every day because I sin every day. As for the cowman across the road from us, it must take him 30 minutes to unwrap that bag of water. That's all you get in the gate to go count his cow. So why do you, does he, why do you think he puts so much effort in securing his gate? One is to keep the cows off of 2164. <laughs> And two, to keep the seeds out. Jesus does the very same thing for his believers. We're not behind those pearly gates yet. We're living here on earth in the midst of chaos while holding the key to the gate. See, once we become his and once we recognize his voice, the gate becomes our mind and our hearts. The gate becomes our conscience. The gate becomes our obedience. The gate becomes our devotion to Him. And He becomes our safety against the onslaught of evil that has been cast upon us. See, we live amongst the thieves. And you and I control the gate. What I'm talking about is the gate to our minds and our hearts and our actions. How we live our lives here on earth. We are the keeper to our mind gate, if that makes sense. We control what comes in and what goes out. He gave us the key, so being the gatekeeper, we can let sin in and we can also put it out. To sin is a premeditated action. And not to sin is a preventive response. That sounds kind of like the wheel's word. It's kind of einstein -y to me. <laughs> Here's my point. It comes from 2 Samuel 11. Too. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. And that woman was very This is the point that caused King, King David 
God's favor. He should have used preventive response. He should have looked away. Right? Instead, he implemented the premeditation action. He left the gate open and he let sin in. The truth is, our natural response is to sin. It's in our DNA. But through the blood of Christ on the cross and our transformation into our new self, our response is to shut the gate. It's, it's up to us to control what comes in and out of our day. We can learn a lot from the shepherd boy who became king, a man after God's own heart. See, because if he can fail, we can fail. Temptation can find its way in and over the walls and through the gate if we let our guard down. First thing that happened after Jesus was baptized was he was tempted. His strongest defense was Scripture, God's holy word. Same thing happens to us after our conversion and we become faithful servants. You ever notice that the double up, he leaves you alone whenever you're in the midst of sin? But whenever you're not, whenever you're leaving, living a godly life, he is all over you. See, Jesus combated the devil by putting on the full armor of God, just what Ms. Lynn said. Here's the truth for you. We should never take it off. We should wear it every day, all day. Here's a rabbit trail direction that we can look at the mind gate. Sometimes we let in distorted thought patterns and they can get a stronghold on our beliefs that hinder our agreement with God's Word. Here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doubt. I'm talking fear, negative thinking, victim thinking, rejection. Performance-based mentality, meaning working our way to heaven. Thoughts like these. These thoughts are not necessarily sin, but what they can do is let sin in. Our thoughts can be become actions, and we will give the devil a place. At the very least, become an obstacle or a stumbling block to our relationship with God. When I think about this, I think about Thomas. Thomas was just as faithful as in any of the other disciples, yet he doubted. Same thing happened to Peter. He whacked off someone's ear standing right next to Jesus. Hot temper. These are the things that we bring with us that we form through life's experiences and are contrary to the Truth of God's word. God tells us not to fear. He told us 365 times. You know what? We still do. I'm guilty. You're guilty. Here's the good part. We hold the key to the game. We all must actively choose to identify and tear down and get rid of any tendencies or deceptions that we drag with us from our pre-transformation. We control what comes in our gate line and what goes out as well. This means searching ourselves through the Holy Spirit, finding our flaws and misconceptions and pushing them out the gate. <clears throat> from the studies I've done, the original city of Jerusalem had four gates to begin with. One in each directional point, north, east, south, to west. So after centuries of occupation, the city and its gates and its walls have been destroyed many times and rebuilt many times. At the time of Jesus, there were seven gates into the city. Damascus Gate, Golden Gate, Herod's Gate, Joppa Gate, Lion's Gate, Dome Gate, Zion Gate. Each gate named for a specific reason. The Damascus gate led to Damascus. Jaffa to Jaffa is always the main, it's also the main gate to the city. Golden Gate, 
also known as the Eastern Gate or the Mercy Gate, the gate that Jesus is said to come through upon his second coming. Herod's Gate, named for, for Herod, imagine that. Lion's Gate, because there's two lions carved on the pillars on it, and probably other reasons I just couldn't find out. Zion Gate, which is located on Mount Zion, the Dung Gate, this leads to the landfill where the trash and residue from the city and the temple is taken out and discarded and burned. Talking about the bodies of the sacrifices and other waste products. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Y'all get the point. I think in today's time, there are eight gates. The new gate is called just that, the new gate. I read somewhere that Upon Christ's coming, there will be 12 gates, each representing the 12 tribes of Israel. I think that each one of these gates is unique and it gives us a specific message about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Maybe the Zion gate is said to be the gate that Jesus will make his triumphal entry into the city. The one that came in on Palm Sunday. It could represent the day that Jesus came into your life and He changed your life forever. Or the mercy gate, the gate that Jesus will enter through when it comes to that. This should be our hopeful anticipation gate. It's been blocked for centuries and it's said to be awaiting a miraculous reopening. The hair gate might bring to mind some oppression that Jesus has freed you from. The sins that we have committed in our lifetime and the freedom from them. <coughs> the dung gate. We all need a dung gate. There's a powerful message in there. It, re it represents the need <coughs> for our cleansing physically and spiritually. And the fire that burns outside of it 24 hours a day, that represents hell. This is where we can shove all of our insecurities, our doubts. We can shove the pride out, the fear. Anything that we have let in our mind gates that separates us from a relationship with Him, we can shove it right out that gate and let it burn on the ash heap of hell. I love this verse about a gate. It's forceful. It's factual. <coughs> It makes a bold statement. And Jesus said it. He said, And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Some say that Satan mirrors everything that God does. So since heaven has a gate, hell must have a gate. But this is the only time the gates of hell is mentioned in the Bible. And the very first time that church is used by Christ in the New Testament. So what's important about this scripture? It goes back to the first part of the sermon about cities being protected by walls and gates. Gates being the, the first place their enemy assaulted. This all because of the strength of the city was determined by the power of the gate. Gates of hell means power of hell. In the New Testament, hell is the realm of the dead. So here Jesus is referring to his impending death. Even though he would be sacrificed and buried, he would rise from the dead and build his church. He was saying that the powers of death could not hold him in. And not only would the church be established, it would thrive in spite of hell's power because of God like Peter, because of God like Thomas and Matthew, all the other disciples, and because of guys and gals like you and me who stand in the gap for Jesus Christ and protect these gates. Those who stand firm and persist in our, our commitment to the precepts of God's holy word. We should say, fear not. It is clear that Jesus was declaring that death has no power hold on God's people. 
captive. It gates are not strong enough to overpower and keep imprisoning the church of God. The keeper of the gate has wielded his power over death, and he has set us free from the fear that most people fear the most, which is death. He is the gate that secures our eternity, the gate of salvation. He is the gate to an abundant life on earth. And he stands watch over us all day and night through our faith and our trust in him. And Jesus Christ is not an exclusive gate. He is a gate of invitation to enter and experience a relationship with God in a relationship with the family of God, his sheep, his sheep, us. But whenever I think about the, the party gates in heaven, I don't think they're going to look like that next door. <laughs> At least I hope not. <laughs> Let's pray about it. Thank you, God, for this day you've given us. Let us rejoice and be glad. Thank you for your, your promise of heaven sealed by that hope. Thank you for your forgiveness when we fail you, as we often do. Thank you for your patience. I know some of the things we do may look silly to you and leave you scratching your head, but Lord, we're just a work in progress, waiting to be washed clean while it's snow. Thank you for loving us. No one can love us like you do. Thank you for your grace, love, and mercy. In Jesus, name all God's children say, Amen. 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 Thank you for listening to my game lesson. Thank you, thank you for making me think hard. Hard than I normally do. You know what? I love you and God loves you. You know how I know that? Because he knows.